Am I forgetting anything? You want me to add anything? No, it's just, I know it's soluble, so it doesn't really matter. But you can put anything in there that makes that, that stuff soluble. Okay. Um, so who's being reduced? What's reduced mean? What's reduced mean? What's reduced mean? It means its charge goes down, right? Its charge is reduced, so that means it's gaining electrons. Who's gaining electrons here? The copper. Ions, the copper ions, not the copper, the copper ions. So my Cu plus two aqueous. Okay, um, oxidized, whoa. Okay, and reducing agent. Why is the copper ion the oxidizing agent? Mm, you need to say it the other way. It's oxidizing the aluminum. That makes it the oxidizing agent. So it's getting the aluminum to give up its electrons. So why is the aluminum the reducing agent? Say that second part first. So it's reducing the copper two, right? So that aluminum metal is reducing that copper two to copper metal by giving it electrons, but it is doing the reducing. Um, voltage, uh, what are we? All right, so we've got aluminum and we've got copper. Um, is, this, is this correct? Is that written correctly for what's happening in this reaction? Yes, it is. This one is not, right? 
I don't have aluminum ions turning into aluminum solid. I do have copper ions turning into aluminum solid. So this one is correct, and this one needs to be the positive 1.66. All right, so let's go back to that. So I've got 1.66 volts plus 0.3, is it 0.34 volts? Uh, two, even, nice, all right. Is this a pretty good battery? Yeah. I mean, two volts, copper's still expensive and heavy. It's, aluminum's not expensive, really, and not that heavy, so not that. It's all right. Purpose of the sacrificial anode? We go with that. If I can prevent that other thing from rusting by itself allowing itself to rust. And how do you choose your sacrificial anode? So I'd need to pick something um, a higher activity metal. Anything else? Cheap, right? Because these things, you're just running through these things. It's going to be rusted. It, your, its whole purpose is to um, become unusable. Uh, will copper metal give electrons to iron metal? Or iron ions? So I've got some copper and i um, got some iron, I don't know, say plus three. Will this happen? It will not. How? Why will this not happen? Iron's higher on the list, so it's it, it would give electrons, but it won't accept electrons from the copper without. I should have said spontaneously. I mean, it, you can make this happen if you put electricity into it, but spontaneously, this this will not happen. Um, so I got zinc metal, and will it give electrons to? Um, silver metal. What do you think? No, why not? No one needs any electrons. Everybody's a metal. Does that make sense? Let's go back up here for a second. Why is this copper plus two the one that was oxidized? Why didn't I write copper there? No. W what is happening to this copper tube that is being reduced? Gaining electrons. So this could gain electrons to turn into copper solid. Can the copper solid gain electrons to become copper minus two? It can't. So what I need is an atom to be able to accept. And in this case, everybody has their electrons. Nobody's missing any electrons, so nobody's going to be transferring any electrons to anybody else. Somebody would need to be missing electrons for there to be transferred electrons. So this one I've got uh, magnesium with a plus two charge. All right, so that's a no. And I've got hydrogen with a plus one charge. Anything happen in there? Why not? Nobody has any electrons to give. They're both missing their electrons, so nobody can give any electrons because the electrons are gone from both of them. So even though the magnesium would like to give electrons to hydrogen, it can't because its electrons are already missing. You look like you want to ask a question, Ben. No? All right. Um, so I've got calcium metal. And I've got chromium ions. I don't know where it is. Is this going to happen? 
Yep. So the calcium has electrons to give. The chromium needs electrons, and chromium is lower on the list. So it could give them the electrons. Uh, how come a gold ring could turn your finger green? It's uh, it's not solid gold, right? What's uh, what's the reasoning of what? Which is what? If it's green, copper. So really what I've got there is a gold ring. Um, it's really just a copper ring that's got gold over the top of it. So what happens to the gold that was on there? Flaked off? No, it's not going to flake off. It's just going to wear off. So the longer you've been wearing a piece of jewelry, the less of the actual metal that, that it's going to be there. So especially something that's on a finger, or especially if you're fidgety, the inside of that ring is just going to start wearing away. Not fast, but it'll definitely wear away. How much gold do you think that you put on, and the term is gold-filled, even though it's the opposite of that, right? It's not filled with gold. It's gold coating some other filling. So if you go to a jewelry store and, and you're like, wow, this gold ring is like $9, how much gold is there? So how many layers of atoms do you think are on there? Very, very few layers. Mm -hmm.